Hey guys, let's see, bringing you another video. Now, welcome to Ashcan. This is the launch video that I'm doing in kind of partnership with Riot. Uh, about a week ago, by the time this video comes out, I was invited to a dev meeting with the actual designers of the champion to kind of talk us through the champion. We could do a QA. and a uh, So basically, I've actually got way more information than I normally have in these videos. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you all the abilities, talking you through them. And at the end, I've actually got a big note to list that I'm just going to kind of walk through and talk about because the devs are just kind of talking a lot and we have got so much information. So I'll cover kind of basic stuff at the end. Uh, but also as a celebration of this video, see this uh, amazing League of Legends Secret Lab chair here? We're actually going to be giving one of these away. So if you guys want to enter that, all you got to do is be a subscriber on my channel. So click the subscribe button, like this video, and all you got to do is give your opinion on Ashkan, the brand new champion. And by the way, he is designed to be an AD carry mid laner. He can, he can still bot lane, but he is designed specifically for mid. And I'll tell you why when we get into the abilities. All right, so just to kick it off, this is the champion. Here is Ashkan. So he's kind of got that kind of Prince of Persia type of vibe going, which I think is really cool. The idea is he's a light sentinel, so similar to Lucian and Senna. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I was told in the kind of the, uh, the, the dev meeting, he kind of didn't complete his training. So he doesn't do everything by the book. He's got a little bit of a dark streak in him because in Ashkan's eyes... He will kill people that kill others, but for him, that's okay. So he's got kind of that moral compass going, and he also has a launch skin, which is Cyberpop. Um, there's only other one other Cyberpop, I believe, character in the game, and I think that belie belongs to Seraphine or Zoe. It it's one of those type of champions, but those are the launch skins. But now what we're going to do is get into his abilities. So the way that I always do it, I'll play the ability once or twice with audio, I won't say anything, so I'll let you listen to the audio, and when uh, I'll mute then the audio, and then you guys, I'll explain the ability. So that's the idea. So uh, let's get into his passive to begin with, which is Dirty Fighting. So that was Dirty Fighting. So every three hits from Ashkan's attacks and damaging abilities deals a burst of physical damage. If the target was a champion, Ashkan also gains a shield. After attacking, Ashkan fires a second attack that deals reduced physical damage. And if I'm not, uh, not mistaken, it was 50% reduced damage on the second attack. Um, the second shot can be cancelled like a regular basic attack. If Ashkan cancels the second shot, he gains a burst of movement speed instead. So yeah, in summary, every three attacks, he deals a little bit of an extra burst. Kind of, you know, think of it like Vayne W, but instead of true damage, it's a little bit extra damage. And he also gains a shield. But he also has kind of like the 1-2. You can see in his auto attacks, it's, it's a kind of 1-2. Uh, situation um he can cancel the second shot and he'll gain movement speed instead of the bonus little damage um so that is his passive dirty fighting now let's move on to the q which is called uh avengerang which is an interesting name and by the way he's a sharima champion for those that are interested because you might see a similarity with this with another champion <laughs> So yeah, that was Avengerang, and the reason why I bring up the Sharima thing, yeah, you might see a little bit of Severe, or Siva, depending how you want to pronounce it in there. Uh, both are from Sharima, so obviously there is a bit of uh, similarities going with that, which I think is cool. And by the way, you can also see the his passive procking um, on the Karthus from the ability, because remember, it was auto attacks and abilities. But anyway, this is Ashkan throws a Broomerang, that deals physical damage and reveals enemy hit, extending its range each time it hits an enemy. Enemies can be only hit once as the boomerang goes out and once as it returns. So once in, once out. But if it hits, it's kind of like um, Seraphine ult, that it will extend the more people it hits. So in theory, if everybody lines up, it can just continue moving forward and hit through all of them, and then it will eventually make its way back. But that's his Q. Very standard, probably maybe the ability you max in lane. 
Um, but I will say next... Okay, so next is kind of going to be a big explanation. And this is where this champion, I'm going to be honest, is maybe going to be at its most controversial. When we were in the dev meeting, a bunch of us kind of reacted like, what the hell is this? So uh, prepare your butts, everybody, for Ashkan's W called Going Rogue. <laughs> So yeah, you're not... I'm sure some people are a little bit confused here. So there's actually two elements to Ashkan's W. There's an active and there's a passive. And uh, I'll just... A little bit of a spoiler. Part of it, yes, is a stealth. And part of it is also a resurrection. And uh, yep, I'm not... I'm not kidding. And um, please, by the way, do stay till the end of the video. Because I'll explain riot's reasoning of why this is balanced because initially a few of us me no way etc were like how is this balanced riot did explain it and i'll explain it at the end of the video at least i'll give riot's explanation to it so going rogue passive this is the passive element when enemy champions kill one of ashkan's allies so you can see the karthas killing senna and lucian they are marked as scoundrels. So the Karthas in this scenario is a scoundrel. When Ashkan gets a takedown on a scoundrel, he gains bonus gold for that kill. And all allies killed by the scoundrel are resurrected at their base. And the scoundrel status is removed from all other enemies. So in this example, you can see that thing above Karthas. It has a big circle. That is the timer. It lasts one minute. So Karthas would be a scoundrel for one minute long. Only Ashkan will see that part. Uh, the Karthas, I believe, will just see the diamond above his head as like he is marked by, by Ashkan. And if he kills Senna, see the one out of four? That means if Ashkan kills Karthas, he will resurrect one ally. So literally, this is... Oh, my teammates all died in a team fight. All four of them were killed by one champion. Let's say a Darius. If Ashkan kills that Darius at any time within the minute, he will bring back the champions. And yes, by the way, this means in late game, when the timers for resurrection are like a minute long, in theory, Ashkan could instantly bring back teammates. Now, once again, I'll explain Riot's reasoning why this is balanced later in the video. So do stick around. Now, the active part of this ability, because, you know, don't forget, that's just the passive. The active part is Ashkan becomes camouflaged for a short duration or indefinitely while near terrain. During this time, Ashkan can see trails leading towards scoundrels and gains movement speed and mana regeneration while moving toward them. So this was the primary reason why Riot has said he is designed as a mid laner. Because mid lane, especially right now, we all know is a roaming meta. So Ashkan needs to roam for this. His whole like reviving teammates, getting extra gold, snowballing the game is all about roaming. You can't roam as the AD carry in bot lane. It just, that's not what AD carries do. But a mid lane, it's literally a mid lane roaming meta right now. So that's arguably why Riot with balance actually hasn't changed the meta because they knew Ashkan was coming. Um, but literally, he if he just presses W while he's in the middle of the lane, like we'll see at the beginning of the clip, he'll just stealth camouflage on the spot for a few seconds. But once again, if he goes next to terrain, he will stay stealth indefinitely he, he it doesn't run out i believe um and if like say top lane he's in mid his top lane ally dies he presses w when he's running to top lane he is faster he is running towards the scoundrel that has killed his top lane ally he is running top very very fast the movement speed of that by the way i have in my notes is much it is similar to having mobility boots so if ashkan uses his w and has mobility boots he is very fast so there is that so again wanted to spend my a, a long time explaining this ability because this what riot explained was kind of the whole core of ashkan which obviously makes sense the second core of ashkan is the next upcoming ability which is called heroic swing So that is Heroic Swing, which 
after all these time and all these years of League of Legends, yes, it's finally taken this long officially to actually have a grapple hook in the game. So this is actually the first legitimate grapple hook, and I think it's really cool. And they did say this was the element of Ashcan that is going to take most people a few games to grab how it feels. Um, so, Heroic Swing is Ashcan fires a hook shot that embeds in the first terrain hit. While embedded, he can recast to swing around the terrain in the cast direction, so either left or right, uh, firing physical damage at the nearest enemy swinging. So you don't have to auto attack while you're doing this, it automatically does it for you, by the way. While swinging, he can recast again to jump off in the direction of the cursor and also then final a, fi a final shot. So I'm pretty sure if you just swing, cast it, you'll just land. You know, you won't get the option. You'll just land automatically like there. But if you recast, it'll fire an extra shot for you like there. So there's a bit of skill to it. And again, Riot did say it does feel a little bit weird initially. But also there's a little passive within this, by the way, of Heroic Swing. The Heroic Swing's cooldown resets when Ashcan earns a takedown on an enemy champion. So if you get a kill, I believe an assist is technically a, a takedown as well, it'll reset. So Ashcan could also be very mobile, that he could be swinging from person to person uh, with Heroic Swing. And obviously it has to be on terrain. And I also, we did confirm, they believe at least, player terrain does count. So a Javan ulti, that's player terrain. A Nivea wall, that's player terrain. All player terrain will count for his hook shot. He can swing off those as well. And now let's finally get into his ultimate which is called, uh, again, bit of a weird name, so hopefully I don't screw it up, uh, Com... Um pants? I probably completely butchered that, but anyway, Com... 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 Um pants. Comeuppance. Oh, it just might be comeuppance. I can't read, apparently. Don't blame me. Anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, it just went black there, uh, so part of the clip is actually broken, and I don't know why. So, excuse that, so I might, you know, I can't really fix that because I'm doing it live. I'll have to, like, reset it myself manually, so I'm not really sure why the clip obviously just seems a little bit broken, unfortunately. Uh, but as you can just kind of see in this part, he's channeling a big gun and then firing bullets. So, apologies that the clip is a little bit broke. Uh, but if I get rid of that and I'll just go on camera and explain what it does, hello. Uh, so what it does is Ashcan locks onto an enemy champion and begins channeling power into his gun to store bullets. At the end of the duration, so the end of the channel, or, or after recasting, he can just recast it if, you know, he just needs a tiny bit of damage. He doesn't need to wait the whole duration. Ashcan unleashes, unleashes the stored bullets. Each dealing physical damage based on missing health uh, for the first minion champion or structure hit. Ashcan can move normally and also cast heroic swing while channeling or firing comeuppance. Um, so yeah, basically it's think of a Caitlyn ulti. He's basically locking on to an enemy and he can keep, keep the difference is he can keep moving. So the way that Riot kind of explained it in a way, this is Caitlyn ulti and Lucian ulti kind of combined which kind of makes sense. So that is that. But that is the champion. So what I'm going to do now, and I know a lot of people probably are freaking out still about the W. I've got a really big notepad here of all the... I took a lot of notes when I was in the dev meeting, and I'm just going to kind of give you the points that I kind of took from that meeting, just to, you know, you, a lot of you may have questions, and some of these may cover that. So let's get into the big one of why does Riot think that this is balanced? Well, you know, how does he have a revive? Now, the reason being, his scaling is worse than Lucian's. So, in terms of being kind of the mid lane carry, Ashkan's bread and butter is mid game. His early game actually isn't amazing, by the way, either. Uh, Riot was actually saying... Um, his lane prowess is less than Lucian and Tristana's in mid. So, you know, you click Lucian and Tristana to bully the enemy mage or whatever. Ashkan doesn't have as good lane phase as those two. And he also falls off more than Lucian. So that is in Riot's mi mind going, okay, so he's, his early game isn't as good as the standard AD carries that go mid. And he cannot carry even more than a Lucian. The idea is he kind of is there just to help to bring back the teammates that can carry. And also, 
is well part of his kit is a bigger bit of you know it's all about roaming roaming to top roaming to bot with the w with scoundrel whatever um it's to try and end the game before it even gets a late game so that is in where riot has you know a lot of, trust me in this dev meeting people were like going what they were really kind of being defensive about it in the way of they don't think it's overpowered um and that that is a word that they actually did they did use that right here i've got very very confident he will not be overpowered on release if anything i think they're expecting a really bad win rate so you know sometimes champions release and they have like a, a 35 percent win rate raya are probably expecting that uh mainly because his play style is a bit weird that you know he is that roaming centric mid laner so when newer players or not as good ranked players play it they may not pull it off very well anyway also mechanically i mentioned his e apparently that that will even take really good players a few games just to kind of get to grips with because it's a completely new mechanic we don't have that mechanic in league which is quite rare actually we don't normally get new actual mechanics but that is it um so just to go through other things what is he good against in mid and what is he bad against he does really well versus mages, apparently, which again doesn't really matter because mages aren't playing in mid. He does really bad versus assassins, and they actually named, I think they named Silas. They said he is bad versus Silas, which again, he is actually meta. So, so you know, Rashkan is going to go in this mid meta of assassins that apparently he is not very good against. They just kill him. They have, you know, they roam as well like he does, but they have better 1v1 than him. So he just ends up dead. Uh, other thing, uh, he's an Ignite champion. Don't take teleport because you're going to be running around everywhere with your W. There's no point taking teleport when you want to use your W. Um, he is a full AD champion that he only has AD scaling. Uh, they are though. They did say all spells are physical. The only thing that they're they're thinking is that they're uh, thinking about changing his passive to not physical. They didn't say what, whether it would be true damage or AP or magic. They didn't say. Um, but the passive, remember, is the extra damage on the second or third shot. I think it was the third shot. Uh, they are thinking about make, maybe making that not AD, but right now it is AD. Uh, other things, his team fights are terrible. He is also really bad into death ball comps. So like wombo combo team comps, a, a Malphite with an Orianna or something like that. He is bad against those. He is also really bad versus tanks because he has basically no percentage health at all to kill a tank. He also is a crit-based AD carry champion. He'll most likely buy one of the three AD carry mythics, so Gale Force, Shield Bow, or Kraken. He'll probably buy one of those, uh, but other than that, he's building full crit. He might buy a collector for his second item, but other than that, it's like crit, Infinity Edge, etc., um other things again just looking through my notes hopefully you guys appreciate that i did take a lot of notes in the meeting uh, on hit feels really bad on him because he has really slow base attack speed and also he has bad attack speed scaling he doesn't scale off attack speed because of his passive is a slow kind of double hit auto attack animation uh, he's hailer blades or electrocute champion so not press the attack not conqueror hail of blades even though he has slow attack speed it helps him get the burst out initially uh, which is quite good uh, also you want to synergize him with a jungler when you're playing ashcan mid you want to synergize him with an invading jungler because he will get to the fight quicker than his lane uh, opponent so even if your Rengar invades in their jungle oh god Rengar needs some help with ashcan's e and his w and his speed he will get there before the enemy, in theory. So there's that. Uh, if you are wanting to play Brom, someone did say, if you are going to play Ashkan Brom, can you do it? They did say, yeah, you can do it. You're just not maximizing his W passive and roaming. What works with him in bot lane? They recommended Brom because of the double hit passive. You can proc Brom passive very fast. So that overall is most of the notes that I've got. Um, I don't think I've got anything else. So they just said he's in play style. They said he's kind of feels like Lucian and Talia kind of mixed together. It, that was their words. He's not as bully centric as Lucian. His wave clear is meh, but he'll be looking to wave clear then roam. He has really also low base AD. I think they said he was about 56 base AD, which is on the low end. Um, and also he has no form of CC. 
You'll notice in his kit, he doesn't even have a slow. He is one of like six or seven champions in League of Legends that has absolutely nothing CC, not even a slow. So that is it. So yes, his kit is interesting. And I know a lot of people are going to be talking once again about the W, this thing of reviving. It's an interesting idea. Um, and oh, I do have actually a couple more things. I just scrolled down. He is bad lethality scaling, uh, and they are they do have ways that they're going to be balancing him for both mid and uh, AD carry. They've got tools of how to deal with it. Uh, Pink Ward, do, Pink Wards do reveal him, by the way. Um, e is not a channel. R is a channel. So you know, if you're thinking Cassidin Q, Cassidin Q would not stop his E, but it would stop the ultimate channel. And um, the expectations is they're expecting him to be a broad champion. What they mean is he's not going to just be like an Azir that's only played in high rating. They are expecting him to be played in all of League of Legends across the board, but they are expecting a low win rate initially. Uh, and he also has a very decent learning curve. So it's probably going to take a little while for this champion to feel good. And Riot, you know, they won't hopefully be like, oh God, his win rate is terrible. Let's buff him. They are probably going to give him a little bit of time uh, to, you know, work uh, and one thing that people say obviously the big ruined event that is coming with obviously ashcan's release what happens if viego becomes ashcan and then because it's not the ultimate ashcan sorry if viego in theory has the revive mechanic and the answer to that was yes if viego takes over ashcan's body and one of viego's teammates dies and if viego kills that teammate because it's in v in Ashkan's W, Viego will revive one of his teammates, which is kind of an interesting uh, synergy. But uh, there we go, everybody. Uh, that is Ashkan. Very, obviously, interesting champion. Uh, kind of similar to a lot of things in League, but also has that kind of refreshing element, which I quite like. But uh, what I want to know is what you guys think in the comment section below. Once again, you are entering for the Secret Lab chair. This is a partnership with Secret Labs. Um, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Make sure you're subscribed, you like the video, and you comment what you think of the champion. Do you think the revive mechanic is going to work? Do you think the riot's gone absolutely mad? I'd love to know. And then the final thing I will leave you with, the final note that I've got, is riot do have backup plans just in case it is a little bit broken. They do have plans in place, but they are confident it'll be okay. So that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks very much again for Riot for giving me early access and also inviting me to the dev meeting. We normally don't have dev meetings. I think they did it this time because they know the uh, revive mechanic's going to be a little bit controversial. So they wanted to kind of fully explain it to us so then I can explain it to you. But uh, there we go. If you guys did enjoy, throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.